Hey guys, it's Gary again. Uh, this is a real quick, short one. Um, there was a time in my life... <laughs> that doesn't sound like the beginning of a short video, does it? But trust me, it will be. Um, there was a time in my life when I couldn't wait to go to my mailbox. Um, why is that? Simply because I always had something on order. Um, most of which was music, obviously. CDs, albums, whatever. Um, but also books and DVDs, videos, things like that. So pretty much every day I would check my mailbox. Now in the last two years, uh, since I got a mortgage, I had to curtail a lot of my buying. So I tend to not to go to my mailbox quite as frequently, especially if I had nothing interesting on order because there was nothing in the mailbox but junk mail and bills. Um, come, come January when I found that I was losing my job, um, even less reason to run to the mailbox because I really couldn't buy anything. Um, this is what is called a fallow period, I guess. Um, probably since I graduated high school in the late 70s and um, got a full-time job right away, um, I have been buying albums, books, whatever, um, at a regular basis. And in the last two years that's kind of slowed down quite a bit more so than the, uh, any other period for like 35 years I always had something coming in the mail record albums whatever CDs um, when I found out about the job situation I really had to stop and as a result um, I, I asked for a bunch of uh, CDs and albums for Christmas and since Christmas I, I have not bought this few in terms of numbers of albums since the late 70s. Um, I think I've bought maybe, since Christmas, I did get a bunch of uh, albums for Christmas. Uh, four albums maybe I've got since then, four CDs. Um, two of them, if, if not three of them, were uh, basically because I had credit uh, on Amazon so I basically got them for my credit for free. One of them was a $5, $5 um, Aaron Copeland album that I, I showed uh, by Tremel Starks. So that didn't really cost me anything. It was $5 in credits. Um, that was definitely worth every penny. But I haven't been checking my mailbox with much regularity based on the fact that I got nothing good coming. Uh, so last night, after not checking my mailbox for, I want to say, about three days, I walk across the street in my condo complex where the cluster boxes are. It was about 8.30 last night, 9 o'clock. Um, and I pulled out a whole bunch of mail that had been piled in there for three days, not knowing that I would have a nice VCLT package from Darrell Washington, my good friend in New York, right over the, right over the bridge, right over the water. Uh, Mr. D. Washington, 607. Is it 607? I'm pretty sure it's 607. D. Washington 607. Yes, I just checked it. Um, and he sent me two interesting compilation CDs, homemade. I didn't even wait, and, and a nice little little note here. Here, get the camera, pick it up, which I will keep. I'll this note gets stuffed into the CDs so it gets saved. Um, and uh, I listened twice. Uh, he, I've got two discs he sent each an hour. Uh, it's like it's like he almost timed into the second. These two discs equal almost two hours to the second. Um, even before listening, I did what I tend to do now: uh, throw them right in my computer, copy them right in my computer. And since they're homemade compilations, I had to type out all the titles and everything, and all the artists, and I had to. Um, since it's technically a vari various artists sampler, if you, compilation, whatever you want to call it, um, I decided, well, what to name them? They don't really have titles, except for um, what Tarot put on here. One of them he put on <laughs> nice, <laughs> and the other one he put on yes. So uh, when I was putting these in, in the computer and I'm typing the artist's names and the titles of the tunes, uh, I called it what else? Uh, VCLT Daryl Nice compilation and VCLT Daryl Yes compilation. So I know they're easy to find if I ever have to look for them. 
uh, in my computer, I can look by the album title. All I got to do is put in VCLT. Brilliant, huh? So I'll never. So even if I forget, oh, what the hell was it that, that Daryl sent me? I could just type in my computer under the album title VCLT, and boom, they will come up. So what's on these? Well, quite quite an array of music, um, and um, only a couple things that I have. If you've seen uh, Daryl's videos, you know what incredible wide-ranging tastes he has. Uh, much, much wide, much more wide-ranging than mine. But it seems like he was um, kind of thinking of me when he when he threw these together. A lot of artists I haven't heard of, um, and a couple I have. There's uh, Andreas Volenheim, Volen, Volenweider, Volenweider, whatever. I actually have one of his CDs. Uh, a tune on there. But it sounds like it's um, it's done with an Armenian singer and Dudek Dudek player. I think is the name of that wind instrument. It sounds a lot like a clarinet. Um, so this is, that's not a track on the album of his that I had, and it's more of an ethnic thing. And I and I looked it up and found out what album that was that it was from. I actually, did most of these tracks that he included um, a Bill Frizzell tune that I haven't heard off of one of his more recent things, a Shenandoah. Uh, Charlie Hunter and Ernest Wrangling thing, which is more of a almost a mainstream poppy instrumental thing. Um, a couple tracks I had actually, uh, Brian Eno Sky Saw, which is a real man. If you didn't know that tune, that that really comes out of left field. That's a strange tune. Uh, I think it's from another Green World. I know I had one of the first early Eno albums. I bought that song, um, so I actually knew that one. But um, regardless of whether the tunes bracket it. That, that's a weird one when that tune comes up to anybody that's familiar with it. Um, what else is on there? Uh, Chick Corea and Bella Fleck. Who I have a bunch of Chick Corea and I have heard Bella Fleck. <coughs> but I didn't hear anything they did together. <coughs> Pardon me. So that was that was nice to hear together. Very interesting. A Gateway song. Uh, the Gateway Trio. Uh, Backwoods song, which was from their very first album in 75, I want to say it is. So that I actually had. Um, a whole bunch of things I don't have were on here, though. Uh, Alphonse Muzon, who I know, and Larry Coriel together, but I don't, I've don't. i never heard them play together. So a track from something they did probably a long time ago. Um, who else did I miss? Oh, somebody, you know, interesting. <clears throat> An Alice Coltrane track, where you hear her playing harp. Now, I've only heard, now I know Alice has got a ton of solo albums uh, that she did after after John Coltrane's death. Um, but I've only ever heard Alice Coltrane in the context of when she was playing piano with her husband. And I always kind of wondered what it sounded like on her own, what, she, what her stuff sounded like. And a uh, inter very interesting track with harp and very nicely done. Um, what else is on there? Uh, Charnet Moffat, who I'd heard of. Apparently it's, a, it's like a bass, a lot of rock energy there. I like a bass and drums uh, duet thing. But very interesting to hear. And interesting, uh, a, a group, I guess it's a group called Hiromi's Sonic Bloom. And I was wondering, well, that's the same Hiromi that I know of. Um, actually, when I was in, I want to say it was the BMG Record Club. Um, I was sending for stuff for them because, as I mentioned in an earlier video, they had some really great sales, clearance sales. And one time I sent for something, and I got a free CD that was uh, Hiromi... Uh, it might have been her first American album. I'm not sure. She's a very young Japanese pianist, and um, that was included there. And this is when it was new, so I want to say this could have been the early '90s, maybe. Um, and I didn't really follow her much after that. But it, sure enough, it's the same young lady uh, in a group that she's got called Sonic Bloom. That's more of a fusion thing. So it's very interesting to hear her doing her take on kind of a late '70s, uh, early '80s. Um, thing. And most of these, when I was listening to them, I'd go on Amazon and I'd look to find the albums they're from and read people's reviews of them. Plus, then I could tell who was in the band and who was playing and, you know, what the musical direction were and how old the albums were and, and information like that. So it's quite a interesting two hours of me sitting listening to the music and also looking these, these things up on Amazon uh, at the same time. Uh, let me see. Also, there's a track from, now I've got a bunch of Carla Bly albums, Steve Swallow albums, but um, there's a track from one of the recent albums that I didn't pick up uh, that's just a trio with Bly on piano, Steve Swallow on bass, and Andy Shepard on saxophone. 
Uh, so there's no real, there's no drums, no rhythm-ish section. Um, and that was really good. That was actually better than I kind of anticipated it would be. Uh, and that's, that's a trio that they've done recently. I've got other things where all three play together in a larger context. Uh, somebody I'd never heard of. It turns out to be a very interesting guitarist with a lot of CDs out. Mary Halverson uh, Quintet. Now, this is somebody that um, I'd never heard of, and when I went and looked on Amazon, there was a whole bunch of releases there, um, and a lot of people com you know, making comments on them. Very interesting, oddball quintet. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember it now. Uh, just guitar, bass, drums, and I think, I think uh, horns. I think I heard two horns on there. Um, very interesting. Uh, let me see. Haviyashi Cohen Trio, which... I'm trying to remember these things now. I think it was a piano trio that I really liked a lot. Um, where is After the Rain? There's a track called After the Rain. Oh, yeah. A Not Cohen, which is somebody I hadn't heard of. Um, it was a really pretty thing called After the Rain, a uh, version of After the Rain. Um, and, and she is... Um, I wasn't sure because I mainly heard piano at the beginning and thought Not Cohen was a piano player. But uh, she's actually a horn player, and she plays saxophones, and I want to say I think flute too, but her, her, it seems like her primary instrument is clarinet, which is fairly uh, unusual in modern times. Um, very warm, nice sound, and a nice, nice long version of um, After the Rain on here, which is really nice. Um, a, a track called Birth, which I definitely could have heard more of, by Brian Haas and Matt Chamberlain which apparently is a duet, a duo of drums and piano, uh, which was really nice. And I even went on Amazon and I sampled, I found the album it was from, and uh, sampled the album. And very interesting. People, people seem to like it. You know, there's a, a few very uh, positive reviews there of it. And uh, I mentioned Gateway already. Um, Alphonse Mazzano and Larry Coriello. I think Larry Coriello is mainly playing on that track uh, acoustic guitar. Uh, now, here's a funny thing, and I don't know if it's going to show up on the counter here, but anyway, when I was loading, I was loading the CD into the computer before I was playing it, and the way, now, all of the uh, artists, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, track number five. There's an insert in here that basically, here's the track and here's the artist. You're probably not going to be able to read it. Maybe you can. If you look at track five, it looks like it's G-O-N-A, Other Side of the Sky. So that's what I put in my computer. So later on, I'm playing it back, and as soon as the track begins, I'm like, wait a minute, I recognize that voice. It starts with um, a female space whisper. If you know, if you know Gong, it's like, I know this track, I know this voice. Um, it turns out it's not G-O-N-A, it's Gong, and the, the stem of the G got erased probably from me just, t you know, touching the paper and rubbing it out or whatever. Um, so it was Gong, not G-O-N-A, which I thought, and then I realized, oh, this is a track from Gong's Angel's Egg album, and uh, the Space Whisper is um, David, David Allen's partner, Jilly Smith, who starts it off, and that's the classic lineup with... Uh, you know, David Allen and, and Steve Hillage and, and Tim Blake and all that. And it was really weird hearing that track amongst all these other jazz tracks, essentially. Uh, it was really kind of kind of fun and totally unexpected. Even though I had typed all this stuff in the computer, I didn't think, you know, I wasn't comparing titles and thinking, geez, there's something I know, and, it, and not realizing it was Gong. And all of a sudden, Gong comes up. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Um, and at the end of it... I haven't heard, uh, it's probably been a few years at least since I've heard the, the track or that album. And I, and I remember like it was yesterday, you know, David uh, Allen yelling, hurdy-gurdy supermarket, hurdy-gurdy supermarket. So just funny, funny stuff and, you know, the kind of gone thing that, the fun and vibe that you got with those, with those classic albums. And there was one other thing on here, absolutely blew me away. I was like, I have never heard of this guy. And I don't know, I, I don't know how many people out there would have heard of this guy. Um, Dickie Landry, L-A-N-D-R-Y is his name. Um, and, and there's this track on here called Alto Flute Quad Delay. And with a title like that, it would probably make you think that it sounds like it could be one musician playing multiple flute parts. 
which it turns out it is. Um, almost ambient, but you can tell it's done, it's not new. It turns out it's from 1975. So I go on Amazon, I was, I was blown away by this piece, it's a, 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 like a 10 minute piece, and um, go on Amazon, look up Dick Land Dickie Landry, and oddly enough, all these full of glass albums come up, uh, some of which I have. Well, it turns out Dickie Landry was one of the original members of uh, Philip Glass's first uh, band that he started, his very his very first band, you know, uh, ensemble, whatever you want to call it. And Dickie Landry was a member of that as a flute player, and he also made some solo discs. There's not many in print, but in 1975 he made this album. I should have looked it up here. Uh, I think it's called 15 Saxophones, and it's all him doing multiple overdub saxophones on one track. And there's only three tracks on the album. One's like a, a 15, a 10 or 15 minute uh, track for like 15 saxophones, and there's this beautiful 10 minute track, uh, alto flute quad delay, and then there's a whole 20 minute track on the other side of the album. It's all solo. He's apparently had a very long career originally from Louisiana, and I, I was just listening to sound samples and. Um, found very quickly that the album is long out of, well, long out of print. It was out of print. It's from a 1975 album. Um, it's called Dickie Landry, 15 Saxophones, I think is the name of it. Uh, but I'm looking on Amazon, it's like, you know what? I gotta buy this. I gotta have this. And that's why That's why these things can be dangerous sometimes. Um, but uh, oddly enough, apparently it went back in print within the last few years, but I guess in a limited edition, because the only CD copies, and I really kind of wanted it on CD, were selling um, from Amazon sellers, starting at $256 for the CD. And you can buy the vinyl, oddly enough, for mm, somewhere between $25 and $30. But I, I you know, really don't want the vinyl. Um, I want the clarity of that CD, and I was tempted to actually buy the vinyl, even though it kind of it was kind of kind of expensive for a guy that doesn't have a job, you know. So I decided, decided to look. I started looking around a little bit. I looked on eBay, which didn't really have anything uh, or had the same prices, and I found another site uh, called Darla Records. I don't know if anybody knows Darla Records, but Darla Records puts out a lot of the Robin Guthrie things, um, the guy from the Cocteau Twins, um, and Harold Budd, they put out a bunch of Harold Budd, um, I think they may even be doing the recent Harold Budd things, I'm not sure, I know they're doing that, the, the combination albums that Harold Budd does with um, Robin Guthrie, I think they may also be putting out his, currently, the, uh, the recent Harold Budd solo albums as well. Oddly enough, and I don't know why, because it's not reissued on their label, for some reason, they have CD copies for $12 plus shipping when everybody else is, like, charged $256, you know? And I never, I never, ever, ever have that kind of luck. And I'm talking new sealed copies here. And I bit the bullet, because I don't have the money to spend on these things. But, uh, man, I, I just heard that, that one track, and on uh, YouTube, there's at least an ex excerpt um, from, or maybe the other, uh, one of the, the tracks, I think the, the 15 saxophones tracks, track uh, from the album, which is also it's about 10 minutes long, is on YouTube. And the only thing that's not on YouTube is the second side of the album, which apparently is like a 20 minute thing. And I don't really have the money to spend, but I had to spend um, whatever it was, I think $15 with including shipping. Um, to get it, but I was I was I incredible that from this Darla Records. I don't know why they have copies of it. I don't think they reissued it, but uh, everybody else, eBay and, and and Amazon, the sellers there want an arm and a leg for it. I know the reissue was a limited edition and it was done probably a couple of years ago. But it's weird that they would have the vinyl of all things um, and not the CD that I believe was issued at the same time. Anyway, I've been banned and I should punish myself. Uh, for spending money that I don't have, but that track is just, just look up Dickie Landry, you'll hear the track that I heard from that album on YouTube, and you'll hear the 15 saxophones track, so you'll get to hear half of the album, uh, with the other half missing, um, but, but, 
interesting guy, you know. I, I, I just this is a result. Of, I, God, I was up late, man. Daryl, man, you know. I listened to the stuff for two hours, and then I'm reading about the various artists, and then I'm reading about Dickie Landry, and it's like, holy crap, you know. I'm practically seeing the sun coming up here, you know. <laughs> And I was bad. I shouldn't have spent that money, but I can't wait for that CD to hit my mailbox. Man, it was very interesting. And somebody I'd never heard of, um, even though, oddly enough, I have him playing on my Philip Glass CDs. Of course, uh, you know, I'm probably not going to remember the name of every single person that plays in Philip Glass's ensemble. So, um, thanks, Daryl. This is a long-winded way of me saying uh, thanks for the CDs. I appreciate them. I'll keep them. The note goes in the CDs, and I keep the I keep any notes that you know anybody would send to me, um, and I really, I really appreciate it. I'm not uh, doing these videos so people send me things. I'm really not. Um, I've gotten so much benefit from doing these videos, from um, just the friendship of the people here in the VC. Um, that that by itself is wonderful, and it's also forcing me to go into my own collection when I'm looking for somebody to do. Um, a video on or or watching other people's videos and saying oh yeah I had that I haven't listened to that for years but just like that the whole Don Cherry thing that I did yesterday uh, that was like two or three days in preparation uh, because once I found the CDs I realized I haven't listened to these in years I'm not even sure what's on these and I'm glad I did um, so guys um, weekends kind of coming to an end here you're probably not going to see this till Monday but um, I just wanted to say thanks to Daryl I'm going to come back with a much shorter than an hour video, I promise, um, very soon. Uh, i got a couple ideas. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll finally do the Bill Connors thing that I've been threatening to do for a while. And uh, I hope your evening, day is going fine, whatever you're seeing this. And uh, I'll be back soon.